Climate change is real, is happening now, and is accelerating. We need vast amounts of zero carbon, always on energy. Fusion can meet that need, and they have to move quickly to do that. Most people, when they think about renewable energy, think of solar and wind. But there may be another renewable energy source that we can use to power the planet, and it's called fusion. Fusion is the process that happens in the middle of stars. So the lightest, most abundant element uh, in, in the universe, which is hydrogen, and in the center of stars, it gets so hot and there's so much pressure that it actually fuses them together and literally makes a new element. It makes helium. And when that happens, it releases copious amounts of energy. On Earth, if we want to make fusion occur, we have to recreate the conditions of stars. This is a technological challenge, a scientific challenge. Scientists know how to create fusion, and they've done it before. The Plasma Science and Fusion Center at MIT has been one of the labs at the forefront of that research. A group of scientists spun off of the lab at MIT to create a startup focused on engineering and commercializing fusion so that humans can use the energy it produces. In order to make fusion energy useful, we have to make it so that it produces more power out of the system than it takes to heat it up to the millions of degrees. We call that net energy. To date, we've got the system nearly hot enough, but it hasn't created more energy than it took to get it hot. So that's an interesting experiment, but not a useful power system. To get something hot, you have to apply energy to it. So imagine the bonfire. So you have to give it some energy to start it, which is a match or something like that. Uh, but once it gets hot enough, it basically is releasing so much energy, it's keeping itself hot and allows the rest of the wood to burn. And eventually that's how fusion will work. This is the way the stars work. Researchers around the world are in a race to figure out how to get to net energy. Commonwealth Fusion Systems believes that they can engineer a smaller device that requires less energy to create the fusion reaction and will result in more energy that can be harnessed for use. Being able to maximize the magnetic field really allows you to decrease the size of that machine by you know, a factor of 60 to 100. Commonwealth Fusion Systems' approach to making fusion occur is based on the tokamak, but it's basically a magnetic bottle that holds the plasma together so you can get it very hot. And what's changed is we now have a new generation of superconductors, wires basically, that allow us to make stronger magnets. And what Commonwealth Fusion System does is try to make the strongest magnet possible so we can make that bottle the tightest. Probably if you think about the volume of a semi-truck but kind of squished down into like more of like a, a donut shape, that's probably about the, that's the size of Spark. It's almost a hundred times smaller in volume than the, the other tokamaks which are being built right now to get net energy. The superconductor allows us to pass electric current without getting hot. So for fusion, this is energy is an obvious, enormous win that we can make our magnetic bottle, but we don't have to pay any electricity to keep it going. Our calculations show that this will push us over the top and we will, in fact, obtain net energy and we hope around mid-2020s. This is the wire. This is the basis of the magnet that uh, CFS is going to be making. This is the magnet that confines the plasma so that inside of the plasma they can make the energy uh, that will then go to the home. CFS is one company of, of 17 others in, in the Fusion Industry Association. Those companies are pursuing laser inertial fusion or magneto inertial fusion driven by pistons and they're all kind of in a race against each other to see who can get there first. This isn't just an academic exercise. Like, we're in a race. We actually need, desperately, massive amounts of carbon-free energy. And fusion, if you can make it economically viable, solves it. What we're going towards is the idea that these would replace what we presently have as power plants. If scientists can figure it out, the potential for fusion is a massive and constant energy source, kind of like the stars, that has very little environmental footprint unlike coal and gas. This has gone from being something that is in the long-term future, the Star Trek future, to being something that's in, in our future now. We have a lot of work to do. We have to 
get the costs down, think about ways to commercialize this, and work with the existing grid. I think it's going to transform the way we use and produce energy in this country and around the world. Hey, NBC News viewers, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.